I'm Cindy Brown and everybody keto. Welcome to my keto vlog episode number two. Uh, guys, this episode had some unique challenges because my husband and I went away for a three day weekend and so this is the first time since starting keto that I had to rely 100% on other people's cooked food and not food that I prepared myself. Uh, so there were some challenges. I did try and uh, sort of anticipate some of those, um, but there were some curveballs that were thrown my way. We'll, we'll see how that goes. I did a lot of um, live taping while I was at Morongo Casino, so you will see a lot of my meal choices. Um, we'll talk a little bit about you know trying to keep the macros and the fat ratios and all that good stuff uh, at the level it needs to be to stay in ketosis. So guys, um, if you are ready, let's get started. So here I am, I'm gonna share with you what I brought on my vacation with me to sort of help me stay strong in keto during the weekend while we're here on vacation. So I'm gonna talk about the things I brought and what I've got for uh, sustenance. All right, so I've got myself some cheese bites and some macadamia nuts for when a snacks attack. Um, I brought some Quest protein packs. I brought my uh, Powerade Zero and a little bit of vodka there you see to mix with it for when I'm at the pool. Um, I also have the chocolate bark because that'll handle my sweet tooth cravings when I'm here. Um, in the little blue container is powdered cream. Uh, in the event that we can't find heavy cream here in the restaurants, I'm going to bring that to put in my coffee. Uh, for my morning bulletproof coffee, I have the Bulletproof Instamix, which is not quite as flavorful as my butter and MCT oil, but it's not bad. Um, you see there's a Keurig here that we had with the hotel, and I brought a shaker bottle, and I brought actually my BB-8 shaker bottle, and you can see it's got um, the little metal shaker inside of it, so I'm going to go ahead and put my Bulletproof ingredients on my coffee, and then I'm going to shake it up uh, before I drink it. So now let's take a look and we'll see what's in the fridge. So we have string cheese, we have Powerade Zero, and then we have almond milk because I'm going to mix that again in the same shaker bottle if I want to have one of my Quest protein shakes. While we're here, let's look at all the stuff in the mini bar that we're not going to touch. Those M&Ms and that Snicker bar, they're going to stay there for sure. Look at this thing, you guys. It's full of soda and sugar and just a bunch of junk that's going to stay right where it belongs inside the mini bar. Add to that all of these snacks, pretzels, actually the peanuts wouldn't be bad. There's pretzels, there's chocolate, chocolate covered something, uh, almonds maybe, and then jelly beans. So those will all be staying there because I brought myself enough snacks keto approved that I am not going to be wanting for anything on this vacation. I hope this gives you guys some pointers on how to successfully vacation while on keto. Breakfast number one at Morongo. Um, I guess it was a great day. We uh, hit the road, so we started out with uh, actually no breakfast. Actually, um, I had my golden coffee in the morning. We grabbed a Starbucks on the way out. Realized sort of halfway through the day that I actually hadn't had any lunch, so I grabbed a couple of macadamia nuts and a sweet cheese. Um, played around with some alcohol, talked a little bit. Still not really happy with the power of vodka, but we'll get there. So I did have a couple of blame Marys while I was out in the pool. Um, I will tell you guys, I'll be careful because when I got back to my room after two Bloody Marys, I was feeling a little, uh, a little loosey. Um, so just be careful with your alcohol and take your green keto. So now let's talk about this morning's breakfast. I got the filet benedict. What I'm gonna do, um, I kind of like to have it served with the bread because it sort of soaks up what's going on, but I will actually, okay, that didn't work as I hoped, take the bread off completely. It's actually easier with regular Benedict. Um, there we go. So that bread will just go over there. So here is my filet uh, Benedict for this morning. And guys, you just have to ask um, the questions that you need to ask to make sure you're in keto. This right here is my heavy cream for my coffee. I wouldn't have had it if I didn't ask for it. And almost all kitchens make their own whipped cream, um, almost restaurant kitchens. 
So you just have to ask them to check with the kitchen to see if they have heavy creams. And I'm all set with my coffee. I'm all set with my breakfast. And it's all keto approved. So uh, bon appetit and we will check in in a little bit. Yeah, Reba, my friends, we are at Tacos and Tequila. Uh, we are going to start with some buffalo wings. I mean, I have just one or two, but I've got loads of ranch dressing. I have my glass of Cabernet. And uh, my dinner tonight is chicken fajitas, and I'll show it to you guys when it comes out. Lots of sour cream and lots of guacamole. Ole! Chicken and steak fajitas, guys. So I have a bunch of peppers. I have a bunch of onions. Um, if you look here really close, they still gave me beans and rice, even though I didn't ask them to. So I had to scrape all of that crap off of my plate. I asked for a whole bunch of guacamole and a whole bunch of sour cream. I'm actually gonna dump this, I think, onto my plate and just make it all almost like a um, like a cream sauce on my meat and my uh, peppers and onions. So again, you know what? You gotta uh, take breaks to make wine out of my guess right when it happens. So uh, here we go. It's time for our Mexican feast at Morongo. You saw everything that I brought on the trip to sort of um, take care of my snack cravings. And when I did a tally at the end of the weekend when I got back, um, I had actually eaten one piece of string cheese. I uh, never opened the cheese snacks. Had a handful of macadamias probably every day that we were there. The uh, Powerade and vodka angle did not work, so I brought a bunch of Powerade Zeros back home with me. Um, but I did actually get to explore some different flavors and I found out that I'm not a big fan of orange, but strawberry isn't bad. But guys, if you want a foolproof way to get your electrolytes and a little bit of like sweet sugar flavor, go with the Powerade Zero Fruit Punch. I guarantee that's, that's the best one they got. So like I promised you guys, in prep for this coming week, I'm going to make some fat bombs. And I am a fan, as you guys know, of my last week's vlog of chocolate and peanut butter is a close second. So what we're going to do today is a really easy fat bomb, guys. We just throw all the ingredients in a bowl and then we scoop it out and uh, we chill it for a little bit. So we're going to be using cream cheese, butter, peanut butter, uh, swerve, vanilla extract, and peanut butter. So we're gonna start with the two hardest that I think to uh, actually um, blend together, which is the cream cheese and the butter. So we're gonna go ahead and throw in the cream cheese and the butter. And guys, one of the things I like about this recipe is it doesn't have almond or coconut flour in it. And while that's not a bad thing, I did make some fat bombs a week or so ago and they just sort of taste grainy with the almond flour in them. So I'm excited to try these ones because they are just the butter. The only granulated thing we have is the sugar. So a whole stick of butter, a whole package of cream cheese. Give that a little mix here. All right, now we're adding the peanut butter. Uh, also guys, all natural peanut butter, no sugar in this guy, just nuts and oil. Make sure we get every last drop out on that guy. Now we'll toss in the sugar. Last thing we have is our teaspoon of vanilla and 
pure vanilla extract. You guys know artificial vanilla because that will also give you sugar. It smells really good already. And then the last thing we'll do is throw the chips in. Let's just get the vanilla stirred around a little bit. All right, guys, and that's what it looks like. And now we're going to throw it in the fridge for 30 minutes, let it harden up a little bit so we can actually scoop it in the balls. All right, so our dough is chilled. And now the fun part, we're going to scoop it onto parchment paper and try and fit this cookie sheet into my freezer. I don't know what freezers these ladies have, but they're like, yeah, I make like 50 of them and freeze them. I'm lucky if I can fit even a bag of green beans in mine. So I'm going to spray with the coconut oil. And again, just going to scoop it out. So it looks about like that and drop it on the parchment paper. Again, as big or as little as you want. Some days you want a big fat bomb, some days you want a small one. So I just do different size ones. And don't skip the coconut oil spray step because it really, you know, you've got sugar, you've got butter, and you've got peanut butter in here. So it can really stick to the scoop if uh, you're not careful. And you could just use a spoon, but again, if you invest in this cookie scoop, it makes, you see how quick work it makes out of it. Um, if it starts to get a little sticky, you can go ahead and uh, spray it with a little more coconut oil, just a little. And guys, quite honestly, these are your fat bombs, so you like a lot of peanut butter, put in more peanut butter. If you like a lot of chocolate chips, put in way more chocolate chips. We're going to freeze these for 30 minutes, and then we're going to just put them in a baggie, and that is going to um, just sit in the freezer, and then when we need them, when we are ready for a fat bomb, we will just... Uh, Take them out of the freezer. I like to let them thaw just a little bit, um, although it kind of tastes like bonbons, if that's what you're going for. All right, there's our last ball. Okay, so it's just that easy. Okay, so here are our fat bombs all set to go. Again, peanut butter, sugar, butter, cream cheese, and chocolate chips. And they're going to the freezer for 30 minutes, and I will tell you I'll be having one of these for sure tonight. See what I mean, guys? Not only are they at an angle, but they're on the top of all my frozen vegetables. But hey, whatever it takes in order to get these fat bombs frozen up and good to go. Okay guys, so back to the grind means back to cooking. And I wanted to share with you guys a keto hack that I made to one of my family's favorite recipes. And that is um, Parmesan chicken. Now don't get that confused with chicken Parmesan. It's not Italian. Um, honestly, it was a best foods recipe that I found that was uh, chicken breasts, um, best foods mayonnaise, a little bit of Parmesan cheese and what you do is you sort of mix that together and then you put it on top of the chicken. So I made that a couple times for my family and they were like, this is so good, why don't we put the coating all the way around it? So I modified my recipe and I've made it for years but I made it with breadcrumbs. So you'll see what I'm going to do is I'm going to dredge the entire chicken breast in the mayonnaise Parmesan mix and then normally I would put it in breadcrumbs but today guys I'm going to put it in the pork skins. So I have already um, crushed up my pork skins and just to show you really, I just used my rolling pin. I take a bunch of the, uh, the pork rinds and I put them in a Ziploc bag. And then I just kind of, more than rolling, I, I really sort of <clears throat> lay on it and I just make sure that I have mostly small pieces. The big pieces are kind of cool. It kind of almost looks like fried chicken. But yeah, just make sure you get everything out. So now I'm just putting it into my breading tray. I already have my pan sprayed with cooking spray. And I've got my mayonnaise measured out. So the mayonnaise goes into the bowl. Sorry guys, battery problems, but we're back. So now what we're doing again, uh, mayonnaise into the bowl. I just get a little generous with my garlic salt. So I blend that together. And then the last thing I do guys is I grate Parmesan cheese into it. And you may say, oh, why don't you just grab the bagged stuff? I don't trust bagged anything. And specifically bagged Parmesan cheese has wood pulp in it to help it not um, stick uh, with a change of temperature. So you never want to get bagged Parmesan cheese. So I usually put about a quarter of a cup of Parmesan cheese in here. I, like I said, I eyeball it. Um, I've never had anybody say, oh wow, that's way too much Parmesan cheese. So I think we're doing okay. All right, so then I blend that in there. All right, and then just like any other meal, oh, by the way, I salted and peppered these chicken breasts. So I just throw the chicken breasts in there, make sure it's coated with mayonnaise, the mayonnaise mixture on all sides. I coat it with pork rinds and into the pan it goes. So we just repeat that process with all the pieces. And I just have two standard chicken breasts that I cut in half. Um, I feel like they cook a little bit quicker and 
Uh, then you have more coating on all of it. And then our last piece of chicken, and that's gonna get all the rest of the mayonnaise. So this is usually the one to go for because it's the moistest, the most moist, moistest, I think. And guys, really, this uh, the mayonnaise on the chicken when you bake it, it's it sort of uh, locks in the juiciness of the chicken. And uh, like I said, it's a family favorite for us. So there are our four chicken breasts getting ready to go in the oven. And if I have any extra pork rinds, which I usually do, I will go ahead and just sort of sprinkle them on the top. All right, now these are going to go in a 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes based on the thickness of the chicken. And I will show you what it looks like when it comes out, guys, because it's phenomenal. And here's what dinner looks like. You guys can see what the pork rinds look like on the chicken. They sure make it nice and crispy. And then we have cauliflower risotto, grilled zucchini, and an avocado. All right, guys, so just to recap, lots of challenges at Morongo. Some of the things that you didn't see uh, on air was... Um, when we went to the pool area, which we do a lot, just so you know, kind of the way it works here in Southern California, like Indian gaming casinos, you just kind of spend the day out by the pool, getting all tan, or in some cases sunburned, get a little liquored up, and then you go back to your hotel room, shower, have some dinner, and then go gamble. That's kind of how my husband and I work it out. So first roadblock was the fact that you could not bring in to the pool area any outside food or beverages. That would be fine if they sold things like macadamia nuts or cheese bites, but they don't. I uh, had a little tussle with the uh, security, and yes, guys, there is actually security at these hotels, um, about how to, you know, sort of be able to snack healthy without, you know, their nachos or their, um, gosh, what else do they have? Chicken sandwiches, french fries, etc. So, sort of lost that tussle. I actually had to put my macadamia in a $10 locker. But you know what? You, you got to make lemonade when someone gives you lemons, right? The other thing that I thought was going to be a great uh, idea, but sort of didn't quite pan through, was they had on Friday night and Saturday night a lobster and steak buffet. Sounds phenomenal, right, guys? All of our cool stuff, lobster, butter, steak, you name it, right? Well, when we got there, and we got there at, oh, I don't know, 5.45 perhaps, um, there was a two and one half hour wait, okay? First of all, you say, well, you know, that kind of happens in busy restaurants. Um, but guys, that was in a line, in a turnstile line, like if you were on a ride at Disneyland, standing the entire two and a half hours. It's not like you could put your name in, walk away, they would call you. No, they expect you to stand in like cattle in this trough waiting your turn. And guys, I love food, trust me, and I love lobster, um, especially unlimited buffet lobster. Don't even get me started. But there is no way in hell that I'm going to wait standing, again standing, in line for two and a half hours for a buffet. That's just not going to happen. I, I don't understand, keto or not, I don't understand how anybody would, would be able to do that. So we spent most of our meals, as you can see, in the cafe. Um, the last night we did have a really nice dinner at the steakhouse and uh, that was everything I could have hoped for, quite honestly. It was the, the best meal of our trip. So again, you also saw what happens when we get back. You know, um, it's it's Monday, so I do have a short week. But uh, what does my week look like? You know, what do I need to plan today now to prepare myself for my week? You know, I, I actually travel for business. I, I drive around locally, you know, in my car. I'm a field salesperson. So I, I need to be able to plan ahead, you know, uh, fail to plan plan to fail, right? Is that how it works? So you guys got to see me make some fat bombs because that is, if I look at my macros, it is really hard to uh, get all your fats in, especially, you know, I, I kind of tend to like more lean meats and, and vegetables. So if you noticed on my videos, um, almost every time we had a, a lunch or a dinner meal, I asked for a side of melted butter. You know, I can throw that on my, my uh, vegetables, like in the first night I think I threw it on my salmon. So that's a way to get some of your fat in. I also spent a little bit of time showing you how I have keto hacked one of our favorite family recipes, which is the uh, Parmesan chicken. And you saw how how great it looked. It actually tasted just as great as it looked. Um, I don't know who created crushed pork rinds as a bready medium, I guess, but they're brilliant. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it allows you to sort of think that you're eating like fried chicken or breaded chicken without any of the carb um, derailments. So guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. Like uh, I mentioned in the beginning, we're going to be doing this every Tuesday and it's going to be the good, the bad, and the ugly. Hey guys, if you are new here at Everybody Keto, I ask you to do me just one favor. Please just, just pound that subscribe button down below 
And also make sure that you hit the little ringy dingy bell because that will let you know every time we put out new content. And also since you're new, I'm going to throw a couple videos up here that let you know what we're about, help you get started. And guys, until next time, this is Cindy at Everybody Keto and Keto on.